four, three, two, one. Reviewers, we are back. Yes. What's good, folks? It is episode 120 on this fine Memorial Day hey, weekend. First and foremost. Exactly, man. I can't even believe we're at, we're at 120. Uh, first and foremost, I know everybody, you know, likes to go out to Vegas and get lit. Yeah. And, you know, you get chicks thrown up on people's shoes. I've been understand, it. man, this is a real holiday. You know, a lot of us have had family and, and, and cousins and brothers and sisters and everybody that have served in the military. So I just want to shout out to everybody that's either served in mm-hmm. the military or knows someone that did serve in the military. Right. Whether it be, you know, recently in like Afghanistan, Iraq going back to Desert Storm, going back all the way to fucking Vietnam and World War II and Korea and all that right, stuff. So, right. you know, just want to make sure that we're really remembering remembering the holiday and all that shit. Uh, Bizzle, man, how, how are you feeling, sir, on this on this fine weekend? Uh, I'm, I'm doing better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, last couple of days, that old flu been trying to catch up with me, man. Uh, but Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this weather been kind of crazy. I know y'all going through it out there in L.A., you know what I'm saying? It's kind of cool out there right now, maybe a little, little, little moist. Uh, but out here in the mm-hmm. desert, it's kind of been the same thing, man. Like today, it's just 75 degrees a day. Beautiful day, sun shining, not a cloud in the sky. Nice. Very uncharacteristic for the desert. If you've been out here any time, any stretch, you know that around this time of year, we are in triple digits, low triple digits, and it's still beautiful days. I know that shit sounds crazy as hell to some people, but, you know, out here, 100 right. degree, 100 degree day in the desert, that's a nice day. So, uh... But we are getting unreal weather right now. Uh, one of my homeboys posted something on IG the other day that said Mother Nature must be getting some good dick because she is in a, in a good mood. Ta! All right? She is in a pleasant, pleasant way. Uh, other than that, man, I'm good. Uh, I went to the gym today, man. Got that got that work in. Uh, had a great workout. Yeah, it is. More better than I expected. I thought I was going to be actually kind of weak today, whatever, whatever. But uh, week five of the program that I'm on right now, week four, actually, uh, we put up some really good numbers uh, for those 10, 10 stats. So... Uh, then I sweated it out, got about got a couple miles on elliptical, and got up out that thing. Now we're here, giving the people what they love, what they need, what they want. You know it. Mm-hmm. That's Champions right. Review. Yeah. That's right. And yeah, I, I did I did the same thing. Got the got the work in. Uh, got the work in earlier. Um, and yeah, man, it's uh, it's actually worked out here. The weather was fairly shitty yesterday, but now it is nice. Just in, just in time. Uh, for the holidays, so you know, just just bless 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 to see another day. Enjoy enjoy the weather, and, right. and you know, enjoy kind of a. It's not you know, reviewers as you know, we normally record this thing on Saturdays or Sundays. We're recording this on a Monday on Memorial Day, so right. it's, you know, we need we need that as people. Even even though whether you be whether you're nine to five cat, you have your own your own business like myself. I mean, you still sometimes you do need that day just to be able to do you. Right. Do your stuff. Exactly. Take care of just your stuff strictly. It doesn't necessarily have to be all straight money making ventures per se. Right. Um, you know, money never sleeps, as you know, but still you gotta be able to take a step back and be like kind of kind of reset the gears. Especially uh for me, because your man's got a new apartment, new spot. Hey, new that's spot, right. Baby. Uh I'm in I'm in here, baby. Uh, it's great. I feel, you know, I, I feel, I, I, you know, I'm an old soul as JB knows, but I, I feel like a true adult now. It's great. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I'm in my, I'm in my own space. It feels good. I'm back. I'm back in uh, North Hollywood, not where we were when we had started this podcast, but I'm back in the vicinity nonetheless. It feels good to be, you know, back in the stone's throw of, you know, my, my home neighborhood right. and around my people. Right, right, so that right. Feels no, good, what up? Um, it, yeah, what up, North Hollywood? Shout out to everybody that's been messing with us in the beginning and, and knows what this thing is about. Um, and as JP mentioned, he mentioned, uh, you know, getting in the gym and taking care of yourself. And we will get that into a new segment we're actually going to introduce. You've seen him talk about it on social media. Um, speaking of which, uh, make sure to follow us at JB and Benny Blue. Right. All past episodes, JB and Benny Blue Review.com. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, we are available on all streaming platforms. Uh, reviewers, hit us up. Of course, we got the Savage Hotline. That's 818-850-2804. Once again, it's 818-850-2804. And also, we want to double down on that because we want to hear your sweet, precious voices. Make sure you can send us a voice memo on Instagram, and we will play that shit on the show. So we are giving you options to reach out to us, give us a shout-out, ask us a question, all that shit. Because we're always trying to incorporate new, new content, new segments. Um, all, all that good shit. Uh, this show is brought to you by a couple of our fine sponsors. First, uh, our new title sponsor, Brave New Urban. Brave New Urban is a design studio with the entrepreneur in mind. 
Visit bravenewurban.com. It's bravenewurban.com to learn about their web design and logo design services, or just simply take a look at the great work that they did on our new logo and branding. Hashtag merch coming soon. Uh, make sure to use the promo code to review and get 30% off your first project. That's a hell of a deal. You're talking about a company that's worked with the NFL, Fortune 500 companies, mm. the whole shit, and they lined us up proper yes, sir. with a new logo. So again, go to bravenewurban.com. And of course, we are brought to you by Pacific Home Buyers. Have you inherited a home or property? Are you going for through three that three per Are you going through pre foreclosure? Damn it, are you? Tell the people. If you are, well, guess what? Pacific Home Buyers helps homeowners in all fifty states get cash for their homes and their deals close within seven to fourteen business days. Word. Visit packhomebuyers.com. That's P-A-C Homebuyers.com. Or call 323-963-3417. That's 323-963-3417 for more information on how they can get you cash for your home today. So those are our fine sponsors. Uh, Bills, man, a couple couple birthday shout-outs and a couple uh, deaths we need to acknowledge before we get into our first uh, segment. Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, happy birthday, Andre 3000. And happy birthday uh, to the late great Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Right. Um, two artists that I know Bizzleman is very uh, familiar with. Uh, Bizzleman, what is your favorite? What is your favorite Andre 3000 song or just moment? Because obviously, as the renew- re- reviewers know, you are uh, you are a student of Outkast. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not an AT alien, but I am. An AT alien, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to, the, to that cast, you know what I'm saying? We call it a cast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, 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 I mean, the crowning moment to me of Outkast is just at them as a, in existence and Andre 3000 is at the Source Awards, you know what I'm saying? What was it, 95? Um, Correct. When he just basically let them know, like, you know, he was a young man, he was a teenager, you know what I'm saying? It was on his heart, and, it, and you could tell he was, he was upset, and, you know, he just let the people know straight up, and from that moment on, you had to hear what the South, not just 3,000, but what the South was saying. You had to hear it. You had to hear it. You, you had to respect it. You had to hear it because, you know, up until that point, people was hearing it, but they wasn't, you know, too much respecting it because it was kind of like mainstream and it was, you know, no knock on nobody that's ever did it in the South, from the South, but it was gangster rap and it was, you know, it was down South gangster rap and so on and so forth. It wasn't as innovative and creative as Outkast came with. They, they, they opened up. Pandora's box of, of, of opportunity when it came to creativity for artists to, to really express how they felt and to come with more innovative style and, and different flows and, and different beats and different concepts. So yeah, that Source Awards, man, that, that let them know the South got something to say. That's my favorite Andre 3000 moment. It gives me chills to this day even when I think about it because uh, that, that, mm-hmm. that really did the damn thing. Uh, Miss Le- Miss Lisa, Miss Lisa Left Eye, she just, she just laced everything she was on. Uh, she just was. She just laced everything she was on. She was a... Uh, 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 yeah, a, a, a free spirit. You know what I'm saying? She was a, a beautiful soul. You know, I don't think I ever seen her without a smile on her face or being goofy. You know what I'm saying? Some sort, some kind of way. Uh, gone too soon. Bottom line, she left us too soon. Uh, but that's God's will, and we can't do nothing about it. All we can do is just remember the good time and celebrate their life. You know? That's right. And uh, a couple, a couple of deaths to acknowledge. JB actually put some up, uh, I believe, or at least certainly retweeted something. Um, uh, the late great Bart Starr of the uh, of the Green Bay Packers. Yes, uh, for, the, for the youngins out there, the younger viewers, uh, he won the first Super Bowl when yep. they played the uh, Kansas City Chiefs mm-hmm. you know, back in the day. So rest in peace to him. And apparently, and, and unfortunately, just today, um, the great Bill Buckner died. Wow. Um, baseball player uh, had a very good career. He's famously known for the whole error in the '86 uh, World Series, um, but. What is commonly not known is that that dude is on the all-time hit list. He had a very he had a very good long career, right. and even had a good career um, with the Red Sox. And good good on the Red Sox for you know once they start winning their titles, you know they uh, they they had a whole thing to kind of have a have a truth and reconciliation with the whole with the whole era because people forget with that World Series right. they still had another game to play so right, it wasn't right, like the, right. the series was over exactly so, yeah it was a fucked up era but he had he had a good career so I want people to make sure people remember that not just the one dude's moment because Lord knows if we were if we remembered for our worst moment it would not be a oh man not be a happy death be bad It'd be you rough. know what I'm saying be rough yep but reviewers we do want you to take care of yourselves so we are going to introduce a new segment, and I'm going to let Bizzleman take it away, because you've heard him say it here and there on the show, but we always like to take our certain sayings, a certain phraseology, and make it into a damn segment. 
that could be of value to you. So as JB said, and you see it on our Instagram story, um, your man is is crushing it in the gym on a daily basis. And summer is upon us. So Bizzle Man, we're introducing a new segment right now, Cue the Music Production, that is the Iron 8 Lion. What are some three what are some three sturdy tips that you as a athlete, professional, a man who just knows how to train can give the everyday reviewer that they can take in to the summer to make sure they're looking their best. That, that's that's practical. That's something that they could do. Right, right. First of all, uh, reviewers, uh, the first thing I want as a, as a as a certified personal trainer and like Benny said, an athlete and, and a guy that just that just lives and dies by the gym. It's just part of my life. So the first thing is consistency, right? Understand that um, the hardest part about the gym is getting to the gym. Period. Everybody makes a million excuses of why they shouldn't go or they got this to do, they got that to do. You got 30 minutes during your day to an hour. You can go get a good workout in, cardio in after that. And that's that. That's consistency. Uh, the second thing I want to harp on is diet. Uh, your diet, everybody thinks it's, it's kind of a 50 50 split. No, it's literally 70 30. Your diet is going to determine whether you're going to get the results you want, whether you want to lose, whether you want to build muscle, whether you want to spread, tone. It doesn't matter. Your diet is pristine in that process. So you have to find one, something that works for you. And why I say something that works for you, I was doing keto. Notice I just said was, Benny. Uh, I, was, I was doing mm-hmm. keto and I've done it for almost a month and a half. And mind you, it's done a great thing. I've lost about 10 pounds, a little over 10 pounds. And my body fat's gone down a little over two and a half percent. And, but at the same time, I was literally dying. Like, uh, for people that don't know me, don't know my stature, I am six foot six and I weigh right now, I weigh 287 pounds. But when I started, I was 306, 307 maybe. Uh, maybe about 310. But my body type doesn't work well with keto. And the fact that I am a pescatarian, uh, it doesn't just doesn't work for me. So you have to find what works for you diet wise. Uh, stick to the plan. Switch it up. Don't be afraid to switch it up. Do research. Read. Uh, there's a million things out there that can help you be better physically for your physique, for your overall health. Uh, a lot of people do it because they want to look good. Honestly, you should you should do what you do in the gym and at the, at the, at the table. Because you want to live longer, because you want to live a, a healthier, more efficient life. That that should be your main reason. Everybody has their own goals and what they the reason why they do what they do. I want to look good. Bottom line, I want to continue to look good. That's that's why I do what I do. And again, I want to live. I have three daughters. <laughs> yeah, I got I got daughters to walk down the aisle, and the baby is seven. Uh, so do the math. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to be here. So I do what I do for them. I do what I do for myself. And then the third one, probably most important, don't be afraid. All right, don't be afraid. Uh, Benny, you know, you already know when I was out there, I, I ran LA Fitness for about a year and a half, my own gym for about a little over a year. And I was with LA Fitness for almost two years. Uh, so being in the personal training department and helping people to find a program that's going to work for them and so on and so forth, you hear a lot of excuses. Uh, you hear a lot of, of reasons why people want to be better. You hear a lot of reasons why people think they shouldn't uh fear it all boils down to fear i used to always break people down because they would give me all these excuses and i would ask them are you scared I'm like, no i'm scared of what are you scared like i'll break them down and eventually they'd be like yeah i'm afraid i don't know what i'm doing okay that's fine don't be scared understand that everybody in the gym is there for the same purpose when it all boils down to it they're there for the same reason all right so don't be scared to go to the gym and get started. Uh, if you're not familiar with the gym, I, I suggest you go in and you just start doing a cardio program. Um, now, of course, that, that's just to get you familiar because you're going to have to build muscle to, to, to burn fat. That's just, that's just what it is when it comes to fitness. So you're going to have to start doing some form of strength training. But just to get yourself acclimated, go in, get on the lip school, walk for 30 minutes, stretch, and get out of there. Just to get yourself comfortable and acclimated with going to the gym. Uh, after that, uh, again, read, like start, look, read. There's a million things on the internet, programs that can help you get started. Uh, intermediate, medium, uh, you know, beginner, all that. It's all right there at your fingertips. Take advantage of it. We want you guys to be healthy, strong, beautiful. All right. Because we love you guys. Because the you know, review is for the people. That's just who we are and what we are. 
That's right. And I'll add to that as far as um, making sure you get out of your comfort zone. Because like JB said, when you're when you're really down down the, the line and you're first starting out with a fitness journey, you know, if you're if you're overweight or you're, you're going through some things like JB said, it's, it's going to start with something simple like you're doing 30 minutes on the elliptical or on the bike and then you're stretching and then you're out of there. But over time, it's going to build and you can't keep doing the same things to get to the goals you want. That includes the diet. Because I've done the, I've done keto before and it's it's worked with me in terms of in terms of dropping like stubborn fat. But as you saw what JB's talking about at the top of the show, you know because it's that that type of diet is built off of fats, it doesn't necessarily give you the things that you need to maintain a good immune system. So then you have to cycle off of that and be like, okay, now what's the next thing to get to my goal? So whether it's the diet or what you're doing in, in the in the gym or however you work out. You have to be able to keep cycling it because ultimately your body will get comfortable with whatever set of exercises that you're doing, and eventually you're going to hit a plateau. And reviewers out there, don't don't um, get discouraged, especially if you if you're kind of more more lean like me, where you really have to be mindful of it because that's the hardest part. When you're big, those that initial weight comes off quick. When you're really on the program right. and hydrating well and eating well, that that's right. first weight comes off quick. It's when you get really close to your goal, that's when, JB can attest to this, that's when it starts getting harder. And you mm-hmm. have to switch it up, and but also be able to stay consistent. Right. Yeah, man. So there you go. The Iron 8 line, it's a new segment we introduced. Well, we'll drop that in from time to time. You know, make sure reviewers get some good game in terms right, of taking care of Give a little motivation, you know what I'm saying? A little motivation on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Get something good for, for the physical and the mental as well. All right, reviewers. Well, you know, look. This this is the time of year where, you know, we got some things ending and we got some things starting. And right now we are at that time of year where it is the uh now the two teams are playing in June and uh we're going to we're going to see what's good. Uh we finally have the matchup for the NBA finals. Not the matchup that we predicted. <laughs> for those who have been following us these last few episodes, we right. did predict the Bucks, which in hindsight, I don't think it was a terrible idea, but no, they're, no, they're, not clearly, at all. they're clearly a year away, you know. But we got the Warriors, we got the Raptors, and uh, we're going to go in for a few minutes on this. This being, of course, the reviews 2019 NBA Finals Savage Preview. Cue that music right now, the NBA and NBC right now. Play that theme. All right, reviewers. Um, it is starting here on this coming Thursday, and the Raptors have the home court advantage. I believe that's because they have the better regular season record. Right. Um, it is the Warriors, and it is the Raptors. Um, the you know the, the pick by Vegas by most experts is that it's going to be the Warriors. Um, Kevin Durant will be out for the first game. They're trying to bring back Boogie Cousins. Um, I know Kawhi was banged up. Their role players are are playing well, but Bizzleman. I mean, as as it stands right now. Um, what are you looking for out of both of these teams, and ultimately, who's going to win, and, and in how many games? Well, I, I said it, my bro, with my bold prediction uh, before the NBA season started that Golden State Warriors won't win the championship. Uh, I have to stick by That's that. True. So uh, the Raptors are going to win in seven. Um, I just think that, and, and this, this is this is by reasoning. Uh, we all know what Golden State has to offer. We know. We understand exactly what they have to offer. Uh, there's no secrets when it comes to them. There's no surprises when it comes to them. They're the Golden State Warriors. They're the champs. But one thing that I've noticed that the Raptors have and they haven't been taken advantage of and that they do bring is their bench has a lot of talent and a lot of intensity. Um, they're, they're deeper than they appear. I was just joking with my oldest son uh, the other night watching the game was that how, how in the hell do they have they should really be doing a 10-man rotation, maybe a nine-man, and they only do a six, basically. So seven at the most, they're, they're deeper than they appear. And I, and I always get upset watching NBA basketball because I'm, I'm coach-minded. So when coaches do stupid shit, it just irks my nerves. I think the Bucks coach is an idiot. I really do. I, I, I just think he's a complete idiot. Because to me, the Bucks should have beat the shit out of the Raptors. If I had that team, we would have beat the shit out of the Raptors. No, no, no knock on the Raptors, because they, they did what they had to do to win, and Kawhi Leonard was spectacular, and then some of their bench guys and role players were spectacular, and they did what they're supposed to do, and they won. But the Bucks coach is a dumbass to me, because he didn't utilize his team the way it should have been utilized. 
Uh, I think that the Raptors coach is not a dumbass. I think he's he 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 really he's not a prideful man. He understands that he needs help, and he listens to his assistant coaches, to his players. They do what's working for them, and that's one thing that makes them successful. And it made them successful in the Eastern Conference Finals. They did what was working for them, and it continued to work. Benny, their intensity is beautiful. It is. It it's, is. it's beautiful to watch. Their intensity is beautiful to watch. They keep the fucking. They keep their foot on the gas, even when they're down. They keep their foot on the gas. Period. All right. They keep their foot on the gas, and that intensity level does not go down. All right. Either you're gonna match it, or you're gonna you're gonna match it or overdo it to beat them. But their intensity level continues to rock crazy, especially when they're in Toronto. It's like the energy is nuts. Uh, they don't get rattled on the road. All right. They don't. They don't get rattled on the road. Of course, you know they used to, we saw they beat them. You know, so they beat Milwaukee in Milwaukee. They don't get rattled. They play ball mm-hmm. and they just continue to grind and continue to chip away. Again, I got the Raptors in seven because I've made the bold prediction. I just feel like um, I feel like man to a man, they can compete with Golden State. And if they can continue to pressure Golden State and keep Steph Curry off the three point line, Steph Curry is the key. Honestly, he's the key. If he's not playing well, they're not going to win. Kevin yeah. Durant is banged up. He, I don't, he can't disappear. I, yeah, I don't think yeah. I don't I don't think Kevin Durant's going to come back this series at all. And if he does, he's not going to be the same person. Right? He had a, he had a partially torn calf. Like that's you know this is basketball. He has to jump. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, certain things take time to recover. Boogie Cousins is not that big of a factor to me. He's really not. So him returning that don't really mean shit to me. It just means Loney, who who they get better production out of than Boogie. Uh, won't True. be playing. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Looney, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll come in sparingly, but Boogie's going to get those minutes. So, um, I, I just I, I just feel like that the, 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 the Toronto matches up a lot better than people think they do. And they have a really good chance of winning. I agree. And I mean, I think, and to kind of what you said in terms of their, their bench intensity, and you're right, the Bucks, the Bucks, especially in crunch time, you know, old boy didn't, didn't really cycle the lineups correctly. To make sure they got the most production, and I think you know, I think it just showed that you know, Gian- Giannis is a year away. He's a hell of a player. I right. vote for him for MVP if I, if I had a damn vote. But it, it it showed that he not only needs to add a little bit more to his game, particularly with a jumper. Oh my god! But also, yes. Yes. He, yeah, you know what I mean. Like especially for, you know from from behind the arc and what have because really he was just kind of dominating off athleticism, which is great if you got to use it. Um, but you know, like you said, with the coaching, particularly in the last five minutes of the game, they were really, especially the last game that they game they ended up losing in six. They didn't really, you know, utilize the lineups correctly to match um, offensive production and, quite frankly, the intensity of what you know the the rappers had with you know uh, Van Vliet, fucking Siakam, right. you know, these these role player cats, Kyle Lowry finally stepping up. And like you said, I think the same thing goes for what you said with the Warriors with Steph, Steph Curry. I think the the uh, the magic bullet, the X factor for the rappers has to, Kyle Lowry has to show up. Right, he right. Has to be yeah, there. he has to play well for the he, win. He, he's been he's been disappearing. Yeah, he's been disappearing as well. Here's the thing, though. I think we're gonna see some great basketball, and I, I'm I'm with you. I think this could definitely be the year where we see, you know, the the dynasty start to start to dip. The whole KD is he leaving? Is he not? You know, you know, whatever. That shit will play itself out. And I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna co-sign your pick of rappers and seven. However, to me and reviewers, you know where we stand on certain things, particularly with how cats, whether they're athletes or entertainers, carry themselves right. out here in this world. Yeah, I think every, I think everybody loses, no matter who wins a series. If you're like us, and here's why: if the Warriors win. It's going to be nonstop KD bullshit. He's going to get in his feelings like he did again this past week, chirping at Chris Broussard, knowing damn well he's been talking to this dude, trying to flex on Twitter. Right. Stop it. You have 10 burner accounts. You already played yourself multiple times. If it did, like, bro, there's a, there's a there's a way to handle this if this shit truly doesn't bother you. So that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Right. On the flip side of it, if the Raptors win, we are never going, JB, you understand that, like, this dude, Aubrey, oh, is going to release. Like twenty seven diss tracks in the most passive aggressive way possible, and like we're never gonna hear the end of it. Right, like, right. I like that's the thing. To, like Toronto reviewers, Raptors fans, this is what I want you to understand. This is just coming from me. Like, it would be very dope to see the Raptors win because a, a Canadian team has never won 
let alone been to the finals. And it would, you know, it'd be something different. But what tarnishes it is this dude who, if you don't understand, like, tries to be American. Maybe you got if you're if you're listening if you're listening to this in fucking Quebec right now in fucking Montreal. Yes. You don't get it unless you're from here. Like, yes, the dude is, is on the top of the charts. You cannot. We've talked about this multiple times. You cannot take away a man's accomplishments and all that. And if people like him, great. And sure. I like some of his songs. I this is this is an issue of of character and ideology and not something that we necessarily co-sign here on the review in terms of how particular individuals involved with this series actually carry themselves in the world. So, JB, I think I'm expecting some good basketball, but I'm not excited for the residual effect of what happens with either team, whoever wins. Are, are you kind of are you, are you kind of with me on this in terms of if the Warriors win, what's going to happen, and if the Raptors win, what's going to happen? You know I'm, 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 I'm right here with you, bro. I, I, I understood where you was going from the jump. Uh, you're exactly right, man. I don't need no need to co-sign, but you're exactly right. It's, it's just going to be, you know, some weird bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they have... Even more groupies, fans, you know what I'm saying? Like the Golden State Warriors have more groupie fans now than they did five years ago. Uh, but, I mean, it's, just, it's really annoying, you know what I'm saying? Like when you talk to people, like, oh, Golden State, Golden State. And, I, you know, the first thing I want to ask, how long you been a Golden State fan? Well, I just, I, I'm right. like, oh, okay. So, that, exactly. Shut up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so, right. and then, exactly. you know, like, and then Drake, you know, he, you know, God bless Drake, man. You know what I'm saying? He's. You know what I'm saying? He is what he is. He, he reps the sticks. And he reps it hard. We get it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate. He's down it. for his team. You can't. Yeah. You can't knock I, him there. He, he, totally he holds it down for his team. Appreciate the loyalty and the love you has for his team. He goes hard for him. That's awesome. Uh, so I mean, you know what? It kind of is. It's gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah, like you right. said, there's no, there's no getting around. You know, what I'm saying what's gonna, what's coming. It's inevitable. Something, something's gonna be some. It's gonna be some bullshit either way it goes. So, uh, right. I'm looking forward to good basketball. If that's one thing. It's definitely gonna be. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's got to bring that funk with him uh, every every game, and he does. They call him robot for a reason. He just just kind of you know does what he does. No questions asked. He just does yeah. what he does. So right, I'm looking forward to all that good stuff. Uh, man, Thursday can't come fast enough, honestly, man. But what I am not looking forward to is the fact that there's going to be a dead period. We know there's going to be a good old dead period coming up of nothing well, to watch. <sighs> Well, it ain't going to be dead for us, because trust me, we, we are going to be serving you up with content. And uh, reviewers, we're going to leave you with this. Um, we introduced a new uh, segment, of course, it is called the For the People segment. And uh, this is this is for you, the reviewers, uh, young and old, um, those who have been rocking with us since episode one, those of us who are just joining us for the very first time on right. 120. Uh, we, are putting, we are now going to put this up on our Twitter and our Instagram. And we are going to choose a, a few different topics. Uh, JB and I each choose two, you know, and uh, covering a wide, wide array of things, whether it be you know NFL, NBA, um, you know, life stuff, music, whatever. And uh, chosen by you, uh, it's the topic that, that, that JB threw out there um, is uh, hip hop's influence on the youth. Now, run back some past episodes. Um, you know, we we've talked about um, you know how you know this certain era of artists has um you know for better for worse um you know put their stamp on today's generation of course uh we did a a a now historic episode on jay-z's uh 444 album make sure to run that all back again jb and bangbloreview.com but um jb this is the one that the people selected for the for the people the brand new for the people segment so um in your mind's eye having a son shout out to joe aka mind of zion dope MC out of Arizona yes, and all the youngins out there from what you see um, what is in this present moment what is hip hop's influence on the youth do you feel like it's shifting are we getting away from the whole Xanax <laughs> shit now and getting into a new era what what do you see not only from your age but also looking at from the, the view of, of a young person in this shit right now well here, here's the fear that I have Benny is that and it's kind of it's kind of been this way now that I'm looking back at it as an adult. Here's the fear that I have is that the youth are getting a misconception about rappers and hip hop artists that uh, you can look a certain way and dress a certain way and act a certain way and you'll be cool in a society. Uh, young people, I just want you all to understand that um, these these people are most of them are fairly talented and they're they're a gimmick, all right. 
But just be for real, they're a gimmick, all right? Um, if, if, if Kashi 6 9 didn't teach you guys anything, is that most of these people are gimmicks. They're, they're, the record company is using them and making them dumbasses and making them act a fool to sell records because they feel like, oh, this right. is what's popular amongst the youth and this is what the youth want to see. Understand this, and I tell my sons, is that there are a lot of people that and make it without education. There are a lot of people that do great things with education. There's a lot of multi-millionaires that don't have education and so on and so forth, but they have a drive and they have sense outside of of Western civilization's education, if you will. They have a different kind of drive. It takes a different kind of drive to be an entrepreneur and to, and to, to make something out of nothing. This generation, I think that they're getting extremely lazy because of hip hop and R&B, not R&B, but hip hop and rap and what they're seeing. I, I really, I feel some type of way about it as more so as a parent. And I don't know if my dad felt like this back in the day, but I'm pretty sure he did because I, I've heard him say certain things and, I, and it just comes in my brain. As an adult, I can hear my dad saying certain things like, you know that shit ain't real, right? And I hope you understand that, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 I, all these things, you know what I'm saying? I'm hearing him say in, 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 my, in, his, in my brain. Now I understand what he's saying. I just don't want the youth to get mis misconstrued, to get it all fucked up and make them understand that you're going to have to put in some work to be better in this world. You're going to have to put in some work to be a whatever you want to be in this world. Um, the people that are making it, good for them. And they're making it. And, and I pray that they're doing great things with their money and and that they're, they're, they're opening businesses and starting you know, these things. But I just don't want the youth to get to get this false narrative of life. You know what I mean? I don't want, that's why Nipsey Hussle to me was so important because he he broke it down and he made it so clear to the youth that, yo, I did this, I did that, but that ain't what, that ain't, that ain't what I want y'all to do. I want y'all to do this. And with this, I want y'all to do this, right? He, he was saying, okay, I want you guys to get education. It's super important, but with that education, keep your, your blackness. Keep your heritage. Make make sure you understand who you are and where you came from. Now buy back into the hood. Let let's let's start doing things for ourselves. Let, let's let's start opening businesses that are on our own. Let's start taking care of our own people. That that's what what I want the youth to understand. Not just fucking popping pills and wearing jewelry and screwing hoes and like you know saying like all these little bras you know saying are raising our, our our girls you know saying our our, our youth female youth to be hoes like I don't know what to say you know what I'm saying like the city girls are and the city girls and Sweetie and Meg the Stallion and like these bras are man like can you rap about something besides sucking some dude's dick and taking money from him like because I got daughters and I don't want my daughters to hear that shit I mean don't get me wrong my influence on my daughters is way greater than Meg the Stallion you know what I'm saying so my, my girls got the game they know they like you know that, that's not it <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? That's that's right. not who you want to be or what you want to be in life. That's not it. So I just need the youth to understand, man. Like we need parents, and as parents, we got to be more influential on our kids' lives. We got to make them understand. Listen to this shit, parents. Listen, like for real. Listen to this shit that your kids are listening to. Like I listen to all this shit, and don't get me wrong, I love music. So some of this shit I hear, I'm like, okay, it's a bop. You know what I'm saying? Go whatever, whatever. But you got to be influential in your kids' life and make them understand. Hey. This is what it's really about. This is life, right? This is what life is really about. This is not a game, not bullshit. This is what life is really about. Uh, so don't get don't get life twisted and say, okay, well, if they can do it, I can do it. You're right. You can, but you gotta have some kind of consequence. You gotta have you gotta have some kind of deeper, deep, a heightened sense of, of reality to understand what's real and what's not. All right. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, I think to kind of to kind of add to that, I think we're in we're in kind of a split era. And I'll kind of explain what I mean. I think that there are people I think that there are a few artists. Unfortunately, you know, we you know, we, we've lost Nipsey and he he was in that group and run a couple episodes back um, when, of course, we had a friend of the show, Chad Carr on to talk about his life and career. That was a great episode that a lot of people responded to. Um I think, JB, I think we're kind of in a split era. And re reviewers, again, for context, for those who are just joining us for the first time, I work with hip-hop artists for many years, and I'm a child of hip-hop, and that's that's it's really in my blood. And I've studied it, and I'm of the culture because I participate in it, and I gave back to it. And I just 
it's just who I am, regardless of what I do now. Right. Um, but um, I've spent enough time watching the different eras and seeing what's happening. Everything old becomes new again. And right now it's 2019, so how you're seeing a lot of artists dress, particularly the male artists, right. and to a certain degree the the female artists, it's very much like nine. It's very much like 99, 2000, right? right. And especially looking at it from the the female artists, like all those artists that you listed, it is very much of that time. And it's interesting when I when I was uh, unpacking yesterday and I had I had the Spotify going, so I had playing a mix. Uh, it was playing a lot of older. Um, uh, like 400 degrees, that kind of era, juvenile, and just yeah. and, um, and stuff like that. And it's interesting because I feel like there's kind of there's kind of a fork in the road where you see most of these artists, like basically m- the main ones that you were just talking about, that are kind of going down that road, especially the female artists. Because if you think about it, shit, you know, you you turn on you turn on a uh, 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 you know real 92.3 or Power 106 out here, any hip hop station, listen to those new Migos records, right? right. Where it's like they have the same tempo and same drums as those old Cash Money records now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that hundred band song, that new shit, that other shit that they basically they're almost like the damn they're like the same tempo and, and I think they're produced by the same cat that they're both on the radio right now. Right. Those literally sound like a two thousand nineteen version of, you know, ninety eight, ninety nine cash money shit right Right, right. and i think in a lot of ways these younger artists especially unfortunately the female artists have been influenced like have been influenced like that and they they look at it as that's kind of that's kind of the lineage of it which there's a certain appreciation for that i get that but on the flip side of that you have the artist again his influence will live on with nipsey but i think you also see it too with like cole and kendrick and, and a, a few other artists not nearly as many artists who are on that other wave right um that are being more thoughtful and saying okay i did these things i did that what are the things that i can do not only to level up creatively but level up in terms of being a you know a uh, a person an entrepreneur a business owner all that stuff like you said um giving back to their community, um, taking advantage of things that, you know, rappers and artists haven't done before right. in the past, really up until like Jay-Z. Really, that was kind of, he was kind of, you know, to, to coin to coin the phrase of him, the blueprint right. to start kind of doing that. And also, too, we're very much, speaking of the everything old becomes new again, we're very much in the th- super thug era, right? right? Where a lot of the male artists, the young male artists, they're fucking incriminating yourself on a song and on social media is at an all-time high like <laughs> these motherfuckers cannot wait to tell on themselves it's, right. it's tremendous like whether whether it's Takashi whether it's that one cat um what's his name YNW Melly or whatever the kid who literally made like a song about right. fucking yeah Murder killing on my dude. mind or whatever and it's, called. yeah yeah it's like bro like you just like they can just play the song in the courtroom and then the dude's gonna bang the gavel I mean that's what's gonna happen right like, <laughs> He, no lawyer can get you out of that. You're literally like you're just like, and like you said, JB. You said you said a few minutes ago where I feel like every generation does that. Where it's like, oh, the, these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. And I think every every generation has kind of done that since hip hop started. It's a it's a life cycle. I get that, right. but I think we've reached the peak of that because now I even I'm working on a new bit. I say this on stage. I'm like, people, young people bitch about Jay Z talk still talking about crack, but it's like. He, that shit happened in the 80s. Right. Like, Cardi B is getting on Instagram and admitting to drugging dudes and taking their money, and that shit was, like, in 2016. Right. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you, you, this, you got, you, if you're going to talk about crime, you got to make sure, like, you're you're omitting names and the fucking statute of limitation right, is yeah. up it's gotta if be, you really want to talk be, about it's that. Gotta you know be what I'm saying? General and broad, like, you know what I'm saying? Like... Right. <laughs> You're talking about I was I was at the fucking Hilton in the spring of 2015 and right. I stole uh, Jerry's wallet. Like, what are you talking about? Right. You're, why, yeah, you, right. you put that you put that in the intro to the song, bitch. Right. What? Meanwhile, meanwhile, motherfucker, this is FBI agent somewhere. Motherfucker sitting there with, just with a pen and pad. You know what I'm saying? Right. Got him. Right. Dumb asses. Right. So I mean, I think I think we're on the same page as that in terms of what what we're seeing in you know, and obviously you know, look. We're 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 in our thirties, J J B for for not much longer, but nonetheless, <laughs> we are in our thirties, and we've been around the block, and we know we know what's up. Because like J B said, a lot of these cats are they ain't gonna be around in a couple years. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, and as hard as hard as it is to believe, um, 
because trends move differently than they did back in the day. Because I was thinking about this the other day too. You probably noticed this too. You talk about the 95 Source Awards. Remember how? Remember how? Like basically back before really the the main internet era started, where where trends would really shift noticeably, right? right. And I think that's because they didn't. There wasn't that pressure of getting all this information from social media and all this stuff where shit just doesn't last very long where right. you constantly have to keep adding stuff yeah. back in the day you really had to make a shift because you didn't have that pressure of people constantly seeing it and talking about it and doing all the shit and running the shit into the ground right. shit would last for a second and then when it was over it would be a whole new thing nowadays the changes seem to be more gradual because there's literally so much shit thrown at us have you kind of noticed that in terms of you know watching you know, watching your son or watching, you know, be, maybe just like being around some of the kids that you coach and being like, yeah. yo, what, what are you listening to in, in their kind of mentality? You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, they, they don't, they're everywhere, all, all over the place, like all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I think, I think that's, that's, not, that's another thing, too. People forget, especially, you know, reviewers out there, if you're under 25, you really haven't seen a lot of trends come and go yet, right? You're young. Right. It happens. It's life. But please believe that, like, all these cats who, you know, got the, you know, got the big truck jewelry with them, with them short, with them short collar ass chains and, you know, yeah, iced yeah. out and, chokers and the whole, shit. you know, with the, with the, yeah, the chokers and the iced out Cartiers and the whole shit. And that's cool. I mean, get, get your money and be successful if that's your thing. But, like, understand that, like, that shit's not, no matter how you slice it, that shit is not going to be around um, forever. And nope. something new is going to come. And it is on you if you want to be a true artist to actually be a part of that thing that's going to um, elevate everything, not, not only creatively, but hopefully you can start doing um, some good for your people and the people that you care about and the things that you care about. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that, that seems, I think to us, that really seems to be kind of the influence where there are things that are kind of whack happening right now, but I think there are... Um, some good silver linings and a handful of people, but some good people nonetheless that are um, leading the charge. Um, so reviewers, that really covers it for episode 120. Bizzleman, any final thoughts for the reviewers before we get on up out of here and enjoy the rest of our Memorial Day weekend, baby? Oh, you know, I just pray that you guys are safe out there. I know you guys won't hear this till tomorrow, but still, you know, so I just pray that you guys are safe out there. Uh, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We rock with y'all heavy, man. We want to make sure that you guys are on top of your game at all times. Uh, be the best you can be. You know what I'm saying? That's that's physically, mentally, whatever, whatever. You know, again, reviews for the people, man. We love y'all. We fuck with y'all real heavy. And like Benny said, man, hit us up online. What's that number again, Benny? It will be 818-850-2804 or leave us a voice memo and the DM on Instagram, that's, that's right. at JB and Benny Blue. That's, that's all right. our social media and JB and Benny Blue Review.com. We're on all episodes. Subscribe, iTunes, give us a five star rating, all that good shit. Um, and yeah, reviewers, we love you. Until next time, a peace out. Peace. You. Yeah.